In the last video, we explored how Node.js uses a single thread model with an event loop to efficiently handle I.O. tasks like reading files, making network requests, or querying databases without blocking the main thread. But we also saw its limitation. CPU intensive tasks like data processing, image manipulation, or encryption can block the event loop, making the entire application unresponsive. And that's where worker threads come in. In this video, we are going one level deeper. We'll break down what worker threads are, how they bring true parallelism to Node.js, and how you can use them to offload CPU heavy operations without slowing down your app. We'll look at how they work under the hood, where to use them, and walk through a real code example. So let's get started and see how multi-threading in Node.js actually works. Before we jump into worker threads, let's clear something up. By default, Node.js runs on a single thread, meaning it can only execute one JavaScript task at a time. But it handles I.O. heavy workloads efficiently, thanks to libuv, which offloads time-consuming operations like file system access to its internal thread pool. So, even though Node.js is single-threaded at the JavaScript level, it does use threads behind the scenes. libuv powers Node.js's asynchronous behavior. It all starts with the call stack. Your JavaScript code runs here, one task at a time. When it encounters an I.O. operation, like reading a file or hashing a password, Node.js registers that I.O. The I.O. task is handed off to libuv, which manages the async work behind the scenes. libuv places the I.O. task into its task queue, and then one of the threads in libuv's thread pool, usually four threads by default, picks up the task and processes it in the background. These threads do not run your JavaScript logic. They are purely for handling system level operations like desk or network access. Once the task is complete, libuv uses event demultiplexer to notify the system that the IO is done. The event loop picks up the completed task from the event queue. And finally, the callback associated with the IO operation is sent back to the call stack to be executed by the V8 engine. And this is how Node.js, despite being single-threaded, can handle I.O. heavy task workloads without blocking the main thread, thanks to libuv and its internal thread pool. So, when performing I.O. tasks like database queries or API calls, for example, reading files, Node.js offloads such tasks to the system kernel, or the operating system, allowing other tasks to run while waiting for I.O. tasks to complete. This code here is non-blocking because fs.read file is handled by the operating system in a separate I.O. thread. While the OS is reading the file, the event loop remains free to process the request or task. And when the file is ready, Node.js picks up the result and resumes execution. Let's quickly understand what's happening here. Async await here is a JavaScript modern way of writing asynchronous code that looks and reads like regular synchronous code. It makes code cleaner and easier to follow. No more nested callbacks or complex dot then chains. I'll explain how async await works in depth in a future video, but for now, here is what you need to know. The code is non-blocking. The line await fs.read file tells Node.js, hey, pause this function here, but don't block the rest of the program. And behind the scenes, Node.js sends the file reading task to libuv's thread pool. While the file is being read, the event loop continues. So we immediately see subscribing to bitemark printed. Once the file is ready, the async function resumes execution, printing the file content and completion message. So even with just one thread, Node.js feels fast and responsive, thanks to non-blocking IO and async await. It manages a pool of threads, usually four by default, and uses them to offload slow system level operations like reading or writing files, performing cryptographic operations, DNS lookups, compression, etc. These tasks are written in C or C++, and libuv executes them in the background, away from the main thread. Once done, the results are pushed back to the event loop, so your JavaScript code can continue. And yes, Node.js itself is single-threaded, but the libraries it uses internally, such as libuv, with its thread pool for some I.O. operations are not. The thread pool, in conjunction with the task queue, is used to handle blocking I.O. operations. By default, the thread pool includes four threads, but this behavior can be modified by providing additional environment variable. 
But, and this is the key, these LibUV threads do not run your custom JavaScript code. For example, <laughs> here we are summing numbers from 0 to 1 billion, a classic CPU heavy task. Even though it's just a for loop, this operation consumes a lot of processing time. And since it's running on the main thread, nothing else can happen in the meantime. And that is why subscribing to ByteMonk is delayed until the loop completes. And this clearly shows that your JavaScript logic like math operation, loops, or JSON parsing runs on the main thread. LibUV's background threads won't help you because this isn't IO. And that brings us to the real solution for CPU heavy JavaScript tasks, the worker threads. Worker threads allow you to run JavaScript code in parallel on separate threads without blocking the main event loop. You can think of them as a mini Node.js environments running in the background, each with their own memory and event loop. So while your main thread keeps serving users, a worker thread can handle the heavy lifting behind the scenes. So here mm. in main.js, we define a function called as run worker that creates a new worker threads and points it to worker.js. This worker runs in a separate thread, fully independent from the main thread. We wrap this in a promise so we can use it with async await and listen for two events. When the worker finishes and sends back a result via message, we resolve the promise. And if something goes wrong, we catch it with error. In the main function, we await run worker, which starts the worker and waits for the results without blocking the main thread. Now look at the line right after that, console.log subscribing to ByteMark. Even though we are doing a CPU heavy task, summing number up to a billion, the main thread doesn't freeze. That line runs immediately, showing that our app stays responsive and snappy. Meanwhile, inside worker.js, we simulate a heavy computation, adding up numbers from one to a billion and send the final result back using parent port.post message. And this is the real power of worker threads. You can offload CPU heavy JavaScript logic, run it in parallel and keep your main thread light and fast. So if you're building apps with heavy computation, worker threads are a game changer. They let you tap into true parallelism without switching languages or giving up the simplicity of JavaScript. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to ByteMonk and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. And if you got more video ideas, drop them in the comments. I would love to help. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.